I'm going to guarantee everybody one thing here, a lot of fun, because I'm hanging out with the guys from 321 Blink, one of my favorite companies in Pittsburgh that I've been hanging out with, 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 with and working with for many, many years. I've got Bob Baker here, who's been on Tech Vibe Radio before. So you're no stranger to my interview process. But I got someone new who I have not interviewed before. I have Mark Delostrito here hanging out with me. Guys, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're part of our 50 Summer Stories with Comcast today. Yeah, thanks so much. Oh, thanks, thanks for having us. us. Absolutely, really man. Like I said, it's always a pleasure because you guys bring a great vibe to everything that you do. <clears throat> and it, it, I know we've got some important things to talk about today when it comes to how like, you've been helping companies navigate COVID with making sure marketing is dialed up. And we're going to talk about how important that is and trying to find some of the positive things that have happened through this whole right. thing as well, too, which I think is just so important. And before we hit the record button on this, you know, Bob brought up some really important points that I cannot wait for us to, to kind of talk about and everything. Before we do that, I just want to make sure that our listeners and our viewers just know a little bit about you guys and your background and what you do at 321 Blink. And of course, the elevator pitch for 321 Blink. And so, Mark, let's start with you real quick. What is your background? What do you do at 321? Is Mark maybe cutting out possibly? Brother Bob. Uh -oh. <laughs> lose him already? cutting out a little bit, yeah. That's what happens in Zoom. No worries. It's all good. Oh, my goodness. So we'll my start goodness. with this. There he yeah, is. Bob. You want me to go? We'll start go with you, Bob. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we have okay, a couple sure. of difficulties. So uh, my history with 321 Blink goes back quite a ways. Uh, I actually met one of uh, my partners now, uh, Tim McLaughlin, 20, 30 years ago, I think it was. We worked together in the advertising business. You've known that poor guy for that long. I'm yeah. Long, you know, long time. <laughs> that's where all the wrinkles, man. It's yeah, like, that's what I, it is. <laughs> with me. But uh, yeah, so then I went on to some other things. I was with Nabisco for about 10 years in uh, marketing and, and sales roles with them. And then I joined Giant Eagle and was with them for about 15 years in a lot of marketing and um, uh, advertising roles with Giant Eagle. And then um, joined 321 Blink almost a couple years now it's been um, and bought into the company. I'm a, one of the partners. I'm vice president of uh, account management. So I oversee all the account activity. Um, and it's fun, man. I mean, you know, I've always loved working with these guys. 321 Blink, when I was at Giant Eagle, did a lot of our yeah. uh, social uh, content, a lot of uh, uh, video content for us and just just kept evolving and you know at the heart of everything they did was creativity and fun uh and and just it showed in the work and when i had an opportunity to, to buy into the company a couple of years ago i i jumped at it and, i'm in i'm in i gotta be part of this thing help yeah, grow it. Yeah. Love, it love it even though tim's been here yeah it's, yeah, it's despite tim right. it doesn't matter <laughs> you work through it you work yeah, through right. those challenges that's right so mark what's your background man uh, my background is I'm a 25-year vet in advertising and marketing. Um, okay. I'm an art director designer by trade. Um, originally from Pittsburgh, so I grew up in Plum Borough. Um, worked at a few ad agencies in Pittsburgh before re relocating to State College area, where I worked at an agency there. Okay. Designed from that, did my own thing for about 12 or 13 years. And in that process, I started working with Blink as you know, our video production arm. I like the way they and, work with people and then they bring you in. You know, that's yeah. kind of how they, ha yeah. yeah, they're really good at that. Um, so, yeah, so we started working together. We knew that we, you know, we connected um, both in terms of our vision and business and all that stuff, but also the creativity and, and production value standpoint. Um, fast forward a few years later, the conversation got to like, hey, what if we made this thing work? We, you know, what, what would it look like? And at, at first, I was going to probably come back to Pittsburgh and, and, and leave Center County, you know, behind. And then we started talking more like, well, no, let's, let's grow the office out there. You know, nice. Blink already had clients in Central PA. Um, we had clients in the Pittsburgh market. So how can we, you know, pull each other together? Um, and it just, it worked. It, it made sense to do it. And I'm glad we did. Um, so we brought our team that had uh, more of the traditional advertising marketing strategy, okay. and branding, um, paired that with, uh, you know, the video production element that, that Blink already had. And so when I came on board, Bob is already there as VP of accounts. Um, I joined as a partner, VP of creative. So we just, we really, you know, rounded out the company itself. <clears throat> so you have Trip with his, his, his marketing background and Tim with his media background. So the four of us come from a really yeah, yeah first, I like it. No, that's so cool, yeah. man. That, that's how good businesses grow. I think it's like you've worked with each yeah. other, so you had this comfort level, and you knew it's something you knew you wanted to be there because you knew how it was how 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 it worked back and forth. So to me, that's, that's it. It's an awesome story. 
And I've also seen, I've seen myself personally just watch 321 just evolve as a company over the years where it started off with pretty much strictly just video work for the longest yeah. time. And then you evolved into all types of marketing. Yeah, it definitely you, has. Yeah. Tell us about just all the capabilities at 321. Yeah, I, I think that's what's, what's probably, is. yeah. You know, you know, we're thrilled to, to be here, both of us, but to, to Mark's earlier point, it's, it's really evolved when, when we were able to, to work a deal with Mark and bring him on. And we actually added some, some other folks as well from an, another previous agency. And it's really taken our capabilities up dramatically. I know to your point, and when I worked with them at Giant Eagle, it was primarily video focused, but now it's a full service marketing agency from strategy to uh, uh, implementation, fulfillment. Um, you know, a digital activity um, that we didn't have before, uh, planning, media planning and, and buying strategy, all of those uh, uh, capabilities. But in, in particular, I would say our creative services department has, has increased. Uh, the capability has gone up dramatically with, with yeah. marketing here. Um, uh, it, it's just... That's it's, our it's, team, our, our creative team, Bob, not Mark. Yep. It's, all, <laughs> everybody. it's everybody, brother. It's yeah, everybody. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. Uh, that's very cool. It's so, great, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, you know, March hits and COVID smacks us around and everyone just starts scrambling. It's just amazing how fast right. people start scrambling. And some of the first things we talk about people start doing is, like, they do some of the dumbest things ever because they panic. And they're like, well, we don't really need to market. We're going to cut back because that's just an expense. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so you start yeah. seeing that. <laughs> but, but, but I've been having a lot of fun interviewing lots and lots of creative companies saying, no, this is the time when you double down and really start doing your marketing. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I think right. it, at least for me, like, cause I came from the client side, I spent so many years on the client side and, and that's exactly what happens when, unfortunately, when troubles uh, uh, come to the, come to, come to the forefront, you tend to pull back right. uh, on your advertising and marketing spending. And in right. this case, I think it's been more dramatic than probably, in the history uh, of the country yeah. and, and yeah. people have really pulled back. And, you know, to me, I think there are still some companies out there and we're working with some clients that, that are taking the, the opportunity, you know, they, they're seeing the opportunity in front of them and they're getting their messages out there. And at least the ones that we're working with are seeing an impact. They're seeing uh, their businesses pick up and, and it's exciting for us to see that because there's so much negativity that's associated with COVID and what's going on. And, you know, we do our best to really look at the positives of, of what are we learning? What's new? How, how have we, how have we evolved from March 13th when we first started working at home and exactly. Um, and, and what, what are the things that we're able to do now that we weren't able to do? And it's, it's amazing. It's the, the world of, of technology and, and, uh, and what we can do today, it was probably available back then, even what we're doing right here, right? Yeah. We're yeah. doing this so much more <laughs> from the time we left our offices, March 13th, I think it was to today at least every meeting I've been a part of has been 100% engagement online mm -hmm. a session mm -hmm. or Google hangout or whatever. And you know, the positives coming out of that is it's ironic because the relationships have gototten stronger. They the have clients that he's met with and the clients that we're working with, the relationships have gotten stronger because we get to see into their world and they get to see into ours. You know, you hear their we're dog sitting, bark for crying out loud. Oh my yes. gosh, it's great. It's like you hear the dog <laughs> barking. Yes. You know, I think you hear Mark's dog barking, barking right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The cats That's my dog. Right? The, the, um, you know, the 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 their wives or husbands yell in, hey, can you do the dishes? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like all kinds of stuff happens. And then the kids come in and you know, you may not have even known a lot of these things about your clients right. and now you're learning and they're learning about you. And I think it just kind of lets everybody's guard down a little bit. Yeah, it, leveled, yeah, it leveled really, really everybody, great. put them on the same sort of field, right? Yeah, like I yeah. think when, when you have a client and agency partnership or any client relationship, you, you know, you, you obviously you treat them as gold because they're your clients. Mm -hmm. But what's nice about right. what we've gone through is we see that we're all humans, right? Like we're all on the same page. We're all going through the same type of stuff. And I think that's what's been really, really helpful is that like Bob said, like you see what's happening behind the scenes and you build a better, stronger relationship. But I also feel it's like, you know what? We're in this together. We're all, you know, we're, it, we're, I'm no different from you. You're no different from me. We just happen to have a partnership. We're trying to work through it together. Right. I think, and I think that's been the positive that's come out of it is just a very, here's where we are. There's no this, there's no that. It's We're all right here. And I think that's been a huge, huge help. And, and really, ironically, when it comes to like our business itself, 
we have become much tighter as a leadership group. You yeah. know, we are more, <laughs> more aligned than ever. You know, like that's, mm-hmm. that's been the one thing, like, especially with me being in, in central Pennsylvania, you know, I'd, I'd be in, in Aspenwall for, you know, two times out of the month. We'd still have calls and, you know, meetings and leadership calls every Monday and all that. <clears throat> you know, when March hit, every single day we were on the phone together. Exactly. Every single day, multiple times throughout that day. You got a lot of Tim yeah. time, right? Yes, uh, we did. Too, yes. too yeah. much Tim time. <laughs> too much Tim time. But, you know, it, it, that, it's, that's been the huge, huge, huge um, positive that's come out of it when it comes to that, that synergy between all four of us, including Zach, our leader of production, um, and just being more aligned with, you know, who we are as a company, where we want to go, um, and, you know, we see that with, with our clients too. I mean, because they're forced to communicate more and right. more and more and more, <clears throat> a more personal level. And I think um, businesses who have had the opportunity to pivot during this time are probably going to come out in a better place because right. now from a vision standpoint, they are more aligned. They're aligned, they're together. focused, exactly. yeah, they understand what matters and what doesn't matter. See, this is why I'm glad I talked to you guys. You bring out the positive and everything. And I think that's super uh-huh. cool. We do our best. And one of the positive things that you're doing, and this can help us kind of talk about the importance of marketing during the downturn, is the fact that you guys have some special packages that you're rolling out. So you're really trying to be able to, you know, keep your business running, but also provide a level of service you, you would not have been able to have found before this as well, too, which I think is super cool. Can you me in some details as to how you're kind of working with, with customers now to be sure that you can help them with their marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of our relationships haven't changed all that much. You know, some some clients continue to push through, you know, just like nothing happened. Of course, there was sort of like that 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 oh, yeah. wall where they stopped mm-hmm. and they pulled back. And of course, our retail clients are are still sort of quiet right now, um, especially if they have media dollars that they that they need to spend. Um, but what we found is, you know, there are certain segments that uh, you continue to press forward: industrial manufacturing, research, technology. Right? There's still something that needs to be made put out there Mm -hmm. um, for consumption so you know some of those clients still continue to push forward but we've still seen you know folks who need to do something right they've been sitting on the sideline and and you know see their their share of voice start to you know dwindle a little bit when they're being quiet so our back to business plans are basically giving them three tiers to choose from right so you've got a set amount of hours here, a set amount of an hours here and an hours here. And you basically have to choose from any of our services, right? So that could be from marketing strategy and planning to media placement, it could be from design and web development all the way through you know, video production. So it gives, it gives new clients or even existing clients the opportunity to say, you know what, we have X amount of time with everybody at Blink um, to push our marketing, our advertising, our, uh, our messaging forward and know that there's no sort of, you know, curveballs, right? It's like, yes. here's what we're going to spend on it. You didn't read that as two asterisks at the end of the paragraph. Right. You know, let me <laughs> check there. Yeah, we do have those two asterisks. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Like, it's, we just want it to be something easy for people to, to understand, to digest, you know, easy for them to manage from, you know, their budgeting standpoint, um, and easy for us to kind of help direct them in, in the right way, like push yeah. them in the right path. Yeah. And I think what we're excited about is the fact that we're, we're different. We feel like we're different and we feel like we can offer everything to those folks. You know, the fact that there are agencies out there that can bring the creative strategy, the planning, you know, maybe some of the, maybe some media activity, you know, maybe production, you know, it seems like you'd have to go to two or three different places to get all of that done. Whereas we're giving you in these packages we're offering during this time, you're able to get all of this at one stop. And you have one of the most important pillars is the video because video in this day and age is yeah. a must freaking have. Yeah, gotta have that be, It can't be any kind of video. It's got to be really good video. And I can just right. testify because the Pittsburgh Tech Council has been you know, partnering with you guys in all sorts of video stuff and your videos are just the best. Yeah, Simple as that. Time. So that's why I think that definitely is a differentiating factor is that you have that comp- important component that a, t- a typical creator firm does not have. Or, or right. Firm right. Does have. So that, that's a big point for you guys. We worked through that. I mean, that was that was a challenge for our video production team too when this all hit, because uh, yeah. we just started doing photo shoots again and everything, right? But mm-hmm. the video production component was difficult because how can you produce a spot or a video without getting you know the green light to go shoot, right? You know, if right. there's so many health health and safety issues. Yeah, how, right how have you guys navigate that? I know people are doing that. They're keeping distance, right? Like, yeah, we're doing. We're living up to all the CDC standards. Okay, um, you know, yep. um, washing our hands more than. Anytime 
in history, I think. So. <laughs> Your hands are raw. That's right. That's right. And the sets are locked down. You know, they, they, you right. know our, our contained, production, right? yeah, production team, you know, they each have a responsibility and a role to play when it comes to the safety, you know, of the set itself and our clients. And so it's, it's one thing to show up and be masked up and everything and have disinfectant and everything, but there's always one person in charge of safety, right? And that person, okay. you know, has every right to say, you know what? you're doing it wrong, you need to do this, you need to do that, or, you know, not necessarily we'll pack up and leave, but we can't shoot until, until everybody's on the same level page, that we're right? all good with. Yeah. 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 And we really, we don't want our clients to have to worry about that. We leave that for right. them. You know, we have all the, yeah, data yeah. And, all of them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it, it should, it should be, they get to show up and we take care of everything from there. So. Yep. I love it, man. Still, still make it easy on them. Yeah. It's yep. such a cool story, like all the way around to see you guys, you continue to, yeah, you're going to continue to grow and you're continuing to help other companies make sure they maintain their, their market status yes. because you know, the time to have the loudest voices you guys say is when no one's talking, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You guys brought that up. I'm like, man, that is 100% true. All the way around. So, so a little curveball question for the day. So as, as part of our series here with, with, with Comcast telling our 50 stories, we're, we're trying to, raise awareness and money for to, to, to bridge the digital divide. And we're trying to uh, raise money for beyond the laptops.org trying to make sure every Pittsburgh public school student that does not have access to a laptop or Wi-Fi has access to it. You know, what are your thoughts on how we can, you know, get everybody the ability to zoom with one another? How can we be sure that everybody has the right tools? So as Pittsburgh grows, we're not leaving anybody behind. Yeah, I think, well, a lot of it comes down to people like you and Pittsburgh Technology Council. Like you have to have organizations that stand behind that effort. Yeah. And, you know, additionally, there's like the legislative process too. I mean, we, right. we've got to get, you know, lawmakers and people in charge of counties in place. I'm speaking just from Center County uh, mm -hmm. PA, you know, right now there's this whole push for, you know, how are we going to approach school? What's, what's the new school year going to look like? Yeah. And so many, so many kids out here in rural areas, right. they, they just don't have um, reliable um, uh, internet bandwidth, service. Yeah. internet service, Wi-Fi. I mean, heck, sometimes I go through it here, um, you know, even in one of the towns. So that it's, it's an effort that we, we just, it has to work. It has to get you know, taken care of. And if more and more people to come together, of course, it's going to work out. Um, but I think, you know, without, like I know for, for our county alone, if it weren't for um, county commissioners getting heavily involved with that push and that effort. Yeah, interesting. To really so you saw a big effort there to make sure that. Oh, huge. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I yep. love you that. know, and it, you know, it, what it comes down to oftentimes is just telling, you know, your taxpayers like, hey, folks, there's going to be an additional X amount of cents, you know, next year increase or whatever. Your but millage might gonna, go up a little bit. It's going to be it. okay. Exactly. Yeah. You're not going to notice. Yeah. You're not going to notice. And it, and it takes care of, you know, all these, all these kids who need to have reliable access. Definitely. And, and I think, you know, when you, when you explain it that way um, and you want to just say, listen, it's, it's about, you know, leveling the playing field making sure everybody has accessibility um, and can become that, you know, rock star student that they should be. Um, it's a no brainer. It shouldn't be that tough to sell. You know, so I, I, I hope that that, you know, not just in Allegheny County or in Center County. Or everywhere, just, yeah. Exactly. Everywhere. It just has to happen. There, there's no reason in 2020. Um, maybe it'll happen more in 2021 <laughs> after we get through this year. Yeah, I, I think we will. But, yeah, no reason it shouldn't happen. And especially now. I mean, look how we're, this is the way it is right now. I mean, right. there's such more of a, a, a reliance on this kind of connectivity that we can't take breaks from making this work. We just can't. Yeah, yeah good stuff. And Bob, any thoughts you have on it? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I have uh, a lot of friends that are uh, in the education world and, you know, my wife in particular uh, was trying to teach online last year and it, it, it's painful. And I think it's getting those stories out, getting those messages out to people because I don't think people realize, like it's Mark true. said, not everybody has a computer. Well, she had a story where one child was trying to learn um, and she was um, speaking to them over the computer. She had a computer. This child was using a cell phone. And had to sh share that same cell phone with her four other brothers and sisters. Oh my God! Like, How's yeah. that possible, right? Yeah. So exactly. it's bringing that awareness to to our communities, to our leaders, to our uh, government officials, right? And, and getting those stories out there because that's a no-brainer. It just has to get rectified. It's so, a very yeah. good, easy place to start. You know, yeah. some of the simplest things in the world that we're 
some of us just didn't weren't aware of. And I was yeah. not, not aware of many of, of the, uh, the situations in my eyes have been open tremendously during this pandemic, which is why I'm so excited to be working with Comcast to kind of make this happen, get people's thoughts on it, create some conversations, just raise a little awareness and Absolutely. Kind of move that, that gigantic stone, you know, a little bit as far as yeah. that goes. But I, I'm so happy you guys gave me a nice big dose of positivity today. I, <laughs> I always do. You get bring a positive aspect to everything. And uh, I guess I'm so glad you're part of our, our 50 summer stories of Pittsburgh tech guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Of course. Appreciate it.